This video consists of four parts, awareness, fall protection components, basic inspection and user information, and review. This video is only an introduction into the fall protection systems on precision drilling and well servicing rigs. Falls, slips, and trips. They can range from minor to life-threatening. Over the last few years, precision drilling workers have had a number of serious injuries and deaths related to fall arrest equipment misuse. In 2005, on a precision drilling rig, the rig crew were running in with heavyweight drill pipe. The derrick hand threw in the stand and latched the elevators. The driller picked up on the stand and the floor crew stabbed it in the stump. The heavy weight was then spun in with the spinning chain. The derrick hand's fall arrest line was caught by the elevator horn when spinning the pipe in, pulling the derrick hand into the heavyweight drill pipe while still being attached to his positioning lanyard. The worker sustained multiple right rib fractures, right shoulder dislocation, and right lung puncture. In 2003, after returning to the rig floor, a derrick hand crossed the floor walking through the danger zone of a rotating Kelly. His lanyard, which was draped over his shoulder, was caught by the Kelly and wrapped around several times before the driller was able to stop the Kelly. In 2002, in between catching stands of drill pipe, the derrick hand unhooked from his positioning lanyard to get a drink of water. He immediately returned to catch the next stand of pipe. However, he had forgotten to reattach his positioning lanyard. Unable to stay on the board, he ended up riding the top of the stand of drill pipe across the derrick supported only by his fall arrest system. The use of fall protection systems has saved numerous lives since being implemented on precision rigs. As an industry and an individual company, we are seeing an increasing amount of awareness, maintenance and installation related issues. When the slope line is improperly installed or maintained, it can be caught by the traveling blocks and either lift the worker off the diving board or pull the worker down onto the diving board. Additionally, related hazards such as taller stands or improperly installed systems can be hazardous. Recognizing hazards means being aware that the potential to fall is always present. Even when a system is in place, workers can't assume that someone else has checked it out. Maintaining a safe workplace means taking care of the work area and ensuring that the systems you are relying on are properly installed and working. Remember that it's always necessary to have a secondary system that will save you if you fall. Normally as height is increased there is increased risk or serious injury. A slip or trip can also result in excessive lost time and even death. Slips and trips make up some 60 percent of all falls and can be avoided by simple actions. Things such as wearing proper footwear, maintaining a clean workplace, and providing non-slip surfaces on recognized high-risk areas. JSAs play a critical role in helping to reduce falls and are available in every doghouse. The JSA will outline the fall protection requirements for specific tasks. It will also discuss how to recognize new hazards or risks and outlines a plan for dealing with them. Remember, if you are unsure of how to best protect yourself at height, it is your responsibility to address your concerns with your supervisor. Working without fall protection is never an acceptable alternative. Precision drilling makes every effort to protect its workers at heights with both temporary and permanent systems. Let's take a moment to review the common key components to any fall protection system. The harness is a critical connection between the fall protection system and your body. Worn properly, it is designed to minimize the impact on your body during a fall and to properly distribute the force. There are different harnesses suited to various jobs. For example, if you are working on the monkey board, 
then the Derrick Man's harness is the best for the job. Alternatively, if all you are doing is climbing with an SRL, then the extra connection points and the weight is unnecessary. After selecting the right harness, it's important that it is the right size and can be adjusted to be snug and comfortable on your body. A loose or poorly fitted harness can increase the negative impact of a fall. Lanyards, shock absorbers, snap hooks, SRLs and lifelines are connecting means. The type of task will dictate what type of connector you will use. It is important to use only connectors certified for fall arrest. Always minimize your swing fall or the distance that you will fall before your fall arrest system starts to slow you down. Current legislation limits free fall to 1.8 meters. The next component in the fall arrest system is anchorage. Most legislation requires us to have an anchorage that is capable of withstanding 5,000 pounds of force or the approximate weight of a three-quarter ton truck. Every time workers are exposed to the risk of a fall, rescue may be required. Precision drilling has developed a rescue from height program and plan for every rig. Make sure you understand the plan. Certain specialized systems incorporate more than one component of a fall arrest system. These systems include things like fixed ladder climbing systems, horizontal systems, and the slope line system above the monkey board. It's important to recognize that even though these systems are typically already installed when you go to use them, you must understand basic inspection criteria. The horizontal system should never be modified. Like other wire rope systems, make sure to observe the condition of the wire rope. While the sag in a horizontal is predetermined, horizontals are normally pre-tensioned to minimize the sag. Always refer to the manual prior to using or inspecting the system. Next is the ladder climbing system available on some of the rigs. Using a harness with a chest-high front D-ring, the worker attaches the sleeve and ensures that it slides easily on the cable and locks off. Look up and down the cable for any visible kinks or broken wires and ensure that the system is either weighted or attached at the bottom to provide some tension to the system, which makes it easier to climb. Next, the worker attaches the slider to the front D-ring with a single small carabiner. Never use a lanyard with a ladder climbing system. Make sure it locks closed and cannot become unhooked. While climbing, the slider will follow the worker up and lead them down. The third system is the most common to precision rigs. The slope line system is used for working on the monkey board and incorporates both the positioning or working lanyard which allows the worker to lean into the derrick and the slope line fall arrest system. This system provides an anchorage for a suspended self-retracting lifeline. The positioning of this SRL has been calculated to reflect both the safety of the worker and their comfort during operations. It has also been calculated to limit the possibility of being caught in the traveling blocks or the stands of pipe. This system, however, has been involved in several incidents since 1998, all due to improper installation, lack of maintenance, or lack of awareness of risks. It is therefore critical to recognize a proper installation. Before leaving the safety of the ladder system, Observe the slope line and ensure that there is no obvious damage to it and that it appears to be tensioned properly. Notice the deep sag in the line that would allow the SRL and slope line itself to become entangled in pipe and traveling blocks. With a loose system, the slope line can sag enough that when the pipe is spun in, the horns can hook on the line and pull the worker into the stand. Report a loose slope line to the rig manager so that it can be properly inspected. Once you have stepped onto the board, 
retrieve the slope line SRL and attach it prior to removing the system used on the climb. Like any other SRL, look to see that the snap hook is working properly. It takes two actions to open it and automatically closes and locks. Also check the impact indicator to ensure it hasn't been deployed. There are three styles of impact indicators. On web models, there is a pucker in the webbing. When impacted, the thread holding the pucker breaks and will either be missing or hanging loosely. On shorter cable units, a brass washer located at the swivel will pop off. This makes the swivel very loose and a red band will be visible. On longer cable units, the snap hook swivel will become very tight and will no longer turn. Like the shorter units, a band of orange will be visible. If the impact indicator is deployed, the SRL must be taken out of service for recertification. Before making the connection, give the line a quick tug to ensure the SRL locks off, then allow it to unlock by retracting slightly. Once attached, move to the back of the board and attach the positioning lanyard. Properly installed, the slope line will be anchored to the back of the monkey board directly above the diving board. Check that the turnbuckle is tightened and pinned through the ends of the threads on both turnbuckle belts to prevent the turnbuckle from loosening. The height of certain stands can be far enough above the head of the worker that if he walks around the stand to push it out of the fingers, he can wrap the SRL line around the tool joint. Notice that when the worker is removing a stand, he is always aware of his surroundings and if the SRL's line gets wrapped on the tool joint, he is able to easily deal with a hazard prior to it becoming serious. If you remove your positioning lanyard for any reason, it is imperative to notify the floor that you are not ready to continue working. Communication between the board and floor is critical to a safe operation. Ensure you review your communication procedures with the rig manager and those individuals you will be working with. What was standard on one rig may not be standard on another. To summarize, inspect the slope line for damage and ensure it is tensioned properly. Inspect the self-retracting lifeline for damage and signs of being impacted. Ensure the turnbuckle has been tightened and pinned. Be aware of surroundings, especially when working with tall stands. Ensure there is proper communication with the driller and rig floor. To review, after looking at the JSA, select an appropriate harness and conduct a pre-use inspection. Ensure all twists are out of the straps, especially the leg loops and connecting straps. Inspect the webbing for any burns, holes, or significant wear. A harness which is so dirty that you are not able to inspect the webbing must be removed from service and cleaned so that it can be properly inspected. Check the buckles to ensure that they are not misshapen and work properly. Also check the D-rings and backplate. Always refer to the manufacturer's recommendations for detailed inspection criteria. Once inspected, put on the harness in a safe and convenient location away from the draw works and other rotating equipment. Wearing a crossover harness, position the front D-ring at the base of your sternum. The harness is only worn when necessary and workers must respect the danger zones identified on site. With the harness properly adjusted, you can then move to the ladder, retrieve the SRL snap hook, and conduct a pre-use inspection of the SRL. Inspect the snap hook to ensure it is working properly and takes two distinct actions to open the hook. Inspect the impact indicator to ensure that the SRL has not been impacted. Observe the cable as far as you can see it looking for kinks or breaks in the line. Finally, pull sharply on the cable to lock off the SRL. Once locked off, gently apply pressure to the line to ensure that the unit does not slip. Attach the snap hook to the harness's integral shock absorber and then climb up to the monkey board. The SRL's tag line should be coiled up and left at the base of the ladder. Once at the board, retrieve the SRL from the slope line. Do a visual inspection to ensure that the line is tensioned and not drooping. 
Observe if the SRL is positioned properly on the slope line. The design will specify that the SRL should be positioned 3.5 to 5 feet from the edge of the derrick. This puts the SRL behind you when you are at the end of the diving board. Once attached, move to the back of the board and attach the positioning lanyard. While attaching the positioning lanyard, look at the slope lines connection at the back of the board. Make sure that the turnbuckle is properly tightened and pinned so that it cannot back off unintentionally. If anything observed is out of the ordinary, report it to the rig manager. The operation is not to start until the derrick hand has connected himself to the necessary fall protection and has signaled the driller that he is ready. While working on the board, it is important to be observant of the work area. As you pull out a stand of pipe, look above you to ensure the lines are clear. When your work is completed and you reach the floor, reattach the SRL's tag line and let the cable retract into the housing. Tie off your tag line so it doesn't blow in the wind and move out of the danger zone. Take off your harness and put it away. Fall protection equipment, as with any other tool, if used right, will not only make a job easier, but can save your life. Treat your equipment with respect, and when you're finished the job, put your tools away. Safety is about awareness. Recognize and respect the hazards on the job.